Sunday service this morning. The Lord bless you. We want to also extend a warm welcome to our internet audience. Um, we are the Apostolic Faith Church, um, residing at 95 Fenham Road, London SE 151 AE. We've just began the service with the choir, first of all with a piano solo, followed by the choir rendition, and we are now coming into the congregational songs, and our first song is taken from CGS number 12. CGS one, two. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. We're going to take verse one, two, five, and six. Verses one, two, five, and six of this song after the introduction. CGS 486. We'll take verses 1 and 3 only of this song. Verses 1 and the last. CGS 486. When you start for the land of heavenly rest, Amen. keep close to Jesus all the way. Amen. Amen.
hold the fort and we will tell the Lord that we are coming and that we will wave this answer back to heaven yes. and say by his grace Amen. we will, we will stand, we will, you know, hold the fort with his strength, with his encouragement, with his guidance, we will stand and be true to him until he comes. So we're going to take verses 1 and 4 only, still seated, verses 1 and 4 of 494. CGS 494. Ho, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. It says, reinforcements now appearing. Victory is nigh. Amen. Victory truly is nigh for us all. After the introduction by the organist. of our book, C um, CJ's Chorus number two. Oh, my loving brother, when the world's on fire, don't you want God's bosom to be your pillar? We're going to take the verse one and verse two, sing it through, and then we'll repeat verses one and two again. <laughs> Though the angry soldiers roll yes. on my tempest-driven soul, Amen. I am peaceful, for I know, Amen. widely though the winds may blow, I have an anchor safe and sure Amen. that can never more endure. Amen. Okay, we're going to um, take verse 1, everybody. Um, verse 2, we'll have all the females. Verse 3, we'll have all the men. And then verse 4, we'll have everybody standing together and including the organists that will join in to sing verse 4 and then they can come back in on the chorus on verse, after verse 4. So verse 1, 
seated, everyone. Verse 2, all the females. Verse 3, the men. And then verse 4, including the orchestra, we all stand and take verse 4, a cappella. And then the chorus, the organist can come back in. So after the introduction. <laughs> just want to praise your holy name. We just want to worship before you, Lord. Yeah. We give you thanks for the many things you've done. We appreciate you as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for this um, great covenant you've brought us into, the covenant of life. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, you've called us 
you've chosen us to be members of the royal priesthood and to be a peculiar people unto you. Thank you for this wonderful privilege you've given us. It's not our making, oh Lord. It is you who have chosen to do that out of your free mind, your free grace, oh Lord, you have given to this whole wide world. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that has made it possible for us to uh, be saved, to be delivered from sin, to live a life that is pleasing to you. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit wooing wooing us from time to time, showing us the way where we should go, to turn to the right or to the left, to move forward, to keep still. We thank you, O Lord, for not leaving us alone, not leaving us comfortless. Lord, as you taught us today, the children of Israel unanimously said, whatever the Lord said, they would do. Lord, we are saying the same thing today. Lord, whatever you say, we want to do. Help us to be doers of your word, not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. Lord, in every way, you know best to help us. Lord, we fall at your feet. Help us, O Lord. We want to renew our stand with you, even today, to draw nearer and nearer to you. Because we know for sure that when we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. Lord, open your arms of blessings. Pour your blessings unto your people. Blessing of salvation, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, healing, O Lord, body, soul, and spirit. Lord, wherever your people are gathered, even today, show forth your mighty power, Lord. Descend in a mighty way, Lord, and bless us abundantly. Help us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray.
scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth, reading from verse 14 through to 18. Ruth, chapter 1, reading from verse 14. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Opa kissed a mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. 15. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Amen. 17. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. 18 and last. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her.
reading from Ruth, chapter 1, 16 to 18. Ruth, chapter 1, 16 to 18. 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. 17. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. 18. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. This morning, the Lord wants to speak to us on the importance of having a firm purpose. Amen. The Lord wants to speak to us on the importance of having a firm purpose to follow him. Where we just read, we could say without any doubt that Ruth had a firm purpose. Yeah. If we look at the few verses I read, she committed everything to her mother-in-law. There are some areas where I grew up where you die they will return your corpse to your place of birth for burial. But this woman said, where they buried the mother-in-law, that's where they should bury her. That she is going nowhere. When we are talking of a firm purpose, because it's a common word that we use, but I want you to see the meaning in the context of our message this morning. When we say firm, we mean strongly fit, unlikely to change, unyielding, solid, inflexible. That's what God wants us to have, and God is able to help us to have it. Amen. You may be wondering, why do we need to have a firm purpose to follow God? Why can't we have just a purpose? Why is this young man putting a firm purpose? It's because the road is long. And on that road, we will meet a lot of things. Yeah. But God is able to help us. Amen. Our decisions, our purpose, our faith, all will be tested. That of root was tested. We knew what she passed through. The husband died, everything collapsed. And now I told her, even tonight, if I get husband, and I'm pregnant, and I have a, a boy, will you be able to wait for those boys? No. Very, very impossible. So, in, uh, in a sense, the future was bleak. Humanly speaking, the future was bleak. But in spite of that, she said, don't discourage me. I've made up my mind. Yes. Your people will be my people. Yes. Where you die, that's where I'm going to die. And that's where they're going to bury me. You know, when we have a firm purpose, those around us we know. Satan we know. Yes. 
And if we don't have it, Satan will know as well. Yes. Without a firm purpose, you don't want to go into a bleak future. So to say. But this woman determined that she will go to the student of the Bible. We knew that our sacrifice paid off. Yes. Meaning that if we stand firm today to serve this our great God, he will be with us. Yes. Rewards await us. Amen. Before we could have a firm stand, a firm purpose, we must build on the rock. And Christ is our rock. Amen. Because on our own, we can do nothing. Our resolve will fail us. But if we are established on, the, on Christ, the solid rock, yes. that is when we could have a firm purpose to go all the way. In a natural sense, houses built on rock, they withstand storms, they withstand high winds, they withstand hurricane. In like manner, we will have storms, we have hurricane, but if we are firmly standing on the rock, of our salvation, we'll be able to say like Ruth that we will go all the way. Amen. And our God is able to help us. Amen. To be a Bible Christian, to work for God, to bear fruit for God, we must be firmly rooted. Yes. Otherwise, we'll just be deceiving ourselves. But our God is the helper of the helpless. Yes. When he sees that purpose in us, that we want to go all the way, he will supply the grace. Yes. Yes. Amen. From what I read, we will know that <coughs> Christian journey will not always be smooth. If yours has been always smooth, uh, problems are on the way. Because heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Our journey to heaven, we are going to face challenges. But when we stand firm on Christ the rock, victory is assured. Yes. Yeah. We have so many people who have gone on before, before us with a firm stand to serve God. Let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 21. Acts 21. I'm reading from 13. Acts 21, 13, and 14. Then Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I'm ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 14. And when he will not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. That's example of a firm stand. Yes. Yes. Those people that were persuading him, they were Christians. They loved him. They don't want him to go and die. Mm. He said, These people, why are you weeping? Why are you discouraging my soul? It's not only to burn me there. I'm ready to die. Mm. And when those people around him saw that resolve, said, there, is no, there is no point dissuading him. Because he had made up his mind. May the Lord help us. Amen. When we face situations like that, may the Lord raise up a standard. Amen. 
so that we can say, by his grace, Amen. we will go and suffer. Amen. What these people are telling us, that they are telling us that they want to go and suffer. A young woman without husband, without any hope of finding husband, and telling you that I want to go that way. It's a life of mystery. It's a life of loneliness. It's a life of want. Without Christ in the heart, we will not resolve to go that way. But God is able to help us. Yeah. As we journey to heaven, for us to enter that pearly gate, we will have a firm purpose. It is a requirement for this journey. And God is able to help us. Amen. Let's see Daniel chapter 3. We are not going to be the first or the last that we have a firm purpose to serve the Lord. Daniel chapter 3, 16 to 18. Sixteen, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, Amen. O king. Eighteen, a fine purpose. But if not, be it known to thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. A big fire has been prepared, but they are telling the king, we are ready to go into that fire. To students of the Bible, those people that carry these three Hebrew children to that fairy furnace, the heat killed them. So you don't even need to enter that fire before that person will die. But our God is in heaven. Amen. He has all the power. Yes. Meaning that whatever you are going through, the God that delivered the three Hebrew children is still alive. Yes. He will be your God. Yes. One thing you need to have is a firm purpose. That God, I want to go all the way. He will supply the rest. Yes. Joshua 24. Joshua chapter 24. Let's see another example. Joshua 24, 15. <laughs> 15. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. God will drive us to that point. He wants to know what is in our heart. Are we going to go with the crowd? Or either we lack or we have, we want to serve that God. Amen. Our God is able to help us. Amen. Whatever you are going through today, have a firm purpose to serve God. Yes. God will fight for you. Amen. Job chapter 1, verse 21. Job 1.21 Job 1.21 
and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Job lost everything because he had a firm purpose to follow the Lord. He said when he came into the world, he came naked. He said he's prepared to go back naked. Even if you are not prepared to go back naked, you can't negotiate that. All we have in this world is only his feet. Those with our loved ones, our nice suit and our nice jacket, they will not allow them to be buried. Uh, they will not allow us to be buried with them because they will still want to use them. They will go and look for a moderate one. Say this one is okay because it's going to rot, isn't it? Yes. So why do we need to waste money? So that's our lot. It's only his feet. God opened the eyes of Job. To know that all he had, they, are all, they were just additions. And that when his time comes, he will not go with any of them. In that state, he could pray, he could bless the name of the Lord. Let's see that last verse in uh, uh, 21. The last sentence there. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. When we have problems, when issues arise in our lives, do we add that one to our prayer? Because God knows about it. May the Lord help us. Amen. From all these accounts, we've read, it is certain that in court, we may have to go through fairy furnace. We may have to go through afflictions. We may have to go through persecutions, false accusations. But with a firm purpose to go all the way, we will be victorious. Amen. The God that delivered the three able children is still on his throne. Yes. He will deliver us. Amen. He will deliver you. Whatever is on your way. Have a firm purpose. You know, on this way, we have children, we follow their parents to church. That's a good thing. But there is going to be a time. Every child, we have to make a decision. Do I want to follow this God? You know, when our children, when they leave home, Many of them, they go to the universities. I do tell parents, you don't have to have hypertension. When they are at home, you want to know where they are at every minute. But now they are there for three, four months. Why can't we just surrender them to God? Once we do our own part, we don't have to have high blood pressure. What they want to do, they will do it. May the Lord make us wise. Amen. When they are under our roof, we have a responsibility. Once we do our own part, yeah. it's only prayer. Mm -hmm. God has surrender it to you. Yeah. Yes. The issue of heaven is good to say, like Joshua, that as for me and my house, yeah. we will serve the Lord. Amen. If you are eight in a family, eight of you will do it individually. Yes. I want to serve God. You can't force people to serve God. May the Lord help us. Amen. A firm purpose to serve God. Some people come to church for various reasons. Some, they see church as a social gathering. But the church is more, much more than that. It's a place to meet God. Amen. It's a place to prepare for heaven. Amen. May the Lord give us understanding. Amen. Some people, they need, they want godly wife or godly husband. As a result, they come to church. To me, it's a good thing to want to marry a godly man or a godly woman. But coming to church is more, more, much more than that. 
when I was um, a little younger than this, my late sister, she was so beautiful, and a man followed her to church. And the man said, I must marry her. The relation of the man told the man, this woman you cannot afford to, miss, to lose her. Go with her to that church. After the, after the marriage, you can do whatever you want to do. The man came. The man saw more than my sister. Amen. 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 The man prayed. Amen. God saved his soul. Amen. After a few years, my, my sister passed away. But the man is still in the gospel today. Amen. Because he had a purpose to follow God. Yes. If his purpose of coming to church is to marry my sister, when my sister died about 10 years ago, by now he must have gone back to his uh, old ways. But today, he's still serving the Lord. Amen. So, if you are here this morning or this afternoon, you will like our men or our sisters, yes. and you want to marry them, yes. it's a good thing. Of course. But see beyond those sisters and brothers. Because only God knows the future. Yes. May the Lord help us. Amen. Some come because of business interest. Those people, they are truthful. They cannot defraud. It's a good thing, but it's not the ultimate. The ultimate is to have a purpose to serve God. All we have in this world Either we want, either we like it or not. When our time comes, we will not take anything away. No. So if you are here this morning for business, for contract, forget about that. Seek God. Yes. He will meet your need. Amen. He has given us a promise in his word. He said, we should seek the kingdom of God first. And all his righteousness. Say all other things will be added to us. May God make us wise. Yeah. Let's see John chapter 3, verse 7. That's the best reason of coming to God. John chapter 3, verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Mm -hmm. That should be the first priority mm. of anybody coming to church, coming to God. You must be born again. Amen. That's our passport to heaven. Yeah. If we have 100 children, none of them will go with us. Our passport to heaven is is your name in the Lamb Book of Life. As your sins be for, forgiven, that will be the qualification. So, this morning or this afternoon, no matter the purpose of you coming to this gathering, I will advise that you seek first the kingdom of God. All other things will be added unto you. Eternity with God should be our number one priority. A firm purpose with God is, does not end to when we are looking for salvation. We must have that firm purpose and determination to go all the way, yeah. to pray for sanctification. Without a firm purpose, you will just be like a roundabout, not moving forward. But when we make a firm purpose that God, all these graces you want for me, I want them. God will give it to you. Because it's a merciful God. Amen. Having gotten our sanctification, we need power from on high. We need to make a firm commitment that God, I want it. We tarry in prayers, and God will give it to us. Amen. 
After receiving all our Christian experiences, the journey has just started. <laughs> when you go to the university and you got your degree, that's not the end. No. You want to go and look for a job? No. Eh? When we get our Christian experiences, it's as if we just got the degree. Now we want to go and work. All those graces, they must be put into use. Yes. Without a firm commitment, we will not be able to do it. May the Lord help us Amen. to do just that. We need God all the way and he's able to help us. Amen. On this journey, as we journey along, we will get to our Red Sea. We will get to our Mara and Meribah. Is that true? Yes, absolutely. But the Lord that parted the rest, Amen. He will make a way for us. Amen. First Peter chapter four. First Peter four, twelve and thirteen. Beloved, think it not strange. Concerning the fairy trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So that's a confirmation that if it pleases God, he will lead us to the Red Sea. He will lead us to Mara and Meribah. But that's not going to be the end. He will make a way. Amen. He made a way for the Israelites. Yes. What has not happened in the world happened. A river, a, a pool of water became solid here, solid here, and a dry ground. Amen. We are still serving that same God. Amen. He changes not. Amen. He will make a way for you. Amen. When we have affliction, sicknesses, bereavements, wants, loneliness, unruly children, they are all circumstances of life. Mm. And the only one who could help us to resolve any of them is God. Mm. And to put God into action, we want to see what is in our heart. Do we have a purpose? Do we have a firm stand to go all the way? These are not strange. They are circumstances of life. And some of them we could not escape them. But God can take us through. Yeah. May the Lord help us. Amen. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. God is praying for you. Amen. What you are going through, God is praying for you. Amen. And he will make a way. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Let's have a firm purpose to continue this journey. In spite of what the Lord may permit to come our way. One thing is certain. We are serving the same God that parted the Red Sea. The same God that brought water out of the rock. And in conclusion, I want us to see Revelation 21.7.
Revelation 21, 7. This portion of the Bible is telling us that your sovereign will not be in vain. Your sadness will not be in vain. Your loneliness will not be in vain. Revelation 21, 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. May God help us to overcome. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word, the word of wisdom, the word of life, the sustaining word. Glory be to your name. Lord, let our coming to you not be in vain. Give us a firm purpose today, and that purpose should take us all the way to heaven, for we pray in Jesus' name.